Okay, so I took out the understitching and I've laid the dress flat, pulled the facing back out and have it flat. And I measured on myself approximately where I wanted to go and I put a pin through there. And now I'm just trying to do as much of a straight line. Now that I have this here, I can take this out actually. Do a straight line down from the center point. And then I'm gonna match up this stitch line so that it goes to that point. And then I'm gonna sew along this stitch point, this stitch line, pardon me. Same thing here. And I will, generally when I get to the bottom, I do one stitch in the middle. I learned that from Lisa Liebson actually. And then back up again and match right into this. All right, fingers crossed. Okay, so I have lowered the neckline um, and I am now hand stitching down the facing just at the shoulder points and maybe at the bottom too. I'm not sure, I'll have to see how it's sitting. Um, and I also fixed the zipper because it was a little bit puckery below. If anyone has a good video on that, like if you've used one on YouTube on how to keep where the dress closes below the zipper, um, I haven't found a good one yet. Anyway, I think it's fine, but if it were a skin tight dress, I think it would be less fine. <laughs> I think it's helped by the volume. Um, but yeah, here's, oops, ah. So here's the new, the new neckline there. So it's just, it's a, what, like an inch and a half lower, but I think, I think it's gonna be more flattering. So now I'm just going to keep tacking down this, these edges. Now I'm just prepping the hemming of the sleeves and then I will hem the dress. All right, so save for the hem because I wanna let it hang just a little while longer before I hem it. Um, we are done. And I'm very happy with how this turned out. So let me I'll, I will wear it at some point, but I just want to show you. So first of all, we, I've tacked down here the facing and I surged or zigzagged the, this um, seam allowance to the zipper and I tacked on the inside here and I tacked down here as well. And then I've done the hem on the sleeve. And then if I can show you the back, one minute. Okay, so there's the back. So the invisible zipper is pretty invisible, I'd say. And I'm very happy with the way this seam matches up. That's pretty good. And I'm not sure I can get far enough to, wait to, sh to show you the whole dress. Let me move it. So there it is, full length. And yeah, really, really pleased. As for this sweatshirt, I'm still not loving it. I tacked down the neck. Um, I finished the hem. I'm still not loving it. I think I'm gonna take off this band that I added 
It's funny because often my hacks work really well, but this is not one that worked. So it's good for you guys to see some of the things that did not work. Um, top stitched it down and everything. I think I'm going to take it off. I might just cut it off, frankly. No, no, I won't. I won't. I'll unpick it. And see, and part of me is tempted just to cut a, new, a whole new sweatshirt in it that's just not quite so oversized. So womp womp. As for the coat, I have now finished all the seams on the arms and I'm about to add those in. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna do that today. I don't know that I'm feeling it, but I don't know. It might be more of a planning day to see what I wanna do next. Okay, I'm back. I did take a break. I needed a little bit of a, of a pause after finishing my French poetry dress, which I do love and I am going to cut in something else, but I do wanna finish the coat first. <laughs> so, I am now pinning in the sleeves and I will sew those up. And then I have to figure out the hem and I have to figure out the pockets. I was gonna say if I do them, but I think I have to, but I think I have to wait until I see where it belts, where it buckles first. So I'm gonna do the sleeves and then I'm gonna see from there. Sleeve one. I've actually already tried it on once and um, I felt the seam allowance was a little too narrow. So I took it in a little bit. So, you know, it's a slightly oversized coat, which I think you kind of want um, in a wrap style like this, because it's kind of like wrapping a blanket almost around you. So I think that's gonna work. And now I'm just going to do the second one. Okay, sleeves are on. I haven't secured the inside facing yet, which is why it's not lying totally flat. And then the last thing I have to do, well, not the last thing, the next thing I have to do is <laughs> clearly my cutting was inaccurate. And that's probably because I think I was I think I was unsure about the length and so I've cut these pieces differently. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to figure that out, but it's looking good. Okay, so I've come to the conclusion that I'm going to have to cut these side panels to match the back panel, which is fine. It will make for a knee length coat, which is what I was going for anyway and is more practical. Um, it does mean that I'm going to have to re-sew these two panels and then flip them back out again, but it's not a big deal. Um, obviously it was just a mistake in cutting. Ironically, my last and only other coat, I also cut one of the panels wrong, so I'm going to have to pay more attention to that in the future. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to get on that. Okay, so I cut the hemline so that it is all even. And I realized that I do have enough of the binding left that I can do it along the bottom of the coat and then just turn up that edge and tack it. So yeah, I'm gonna do that. So I have it, I have it on, it doesn't look like it because this is still flipped right sides together, um, but this is the right side of the coat. So I'm going to do that and then turn it over and I should have a nice hemmed coat, so that'll be nice. Okay, so that portion is done. I still haven't secured the lining to the inside, which is why it's kind of puffing out a fair bit. And I have evened out the hemline as well as just pinned up, I just pinned up the um, hem just so I could get a look at it. So um, yeah, and I was able to use, like I said, the, I was able to use that. So that's gonna be nice actually going around the bottom there. Unfortunately, I don't have enough to do every seam. Um, they are actually finished, even though it doesn't look like it. So I'll have to trim all that out. And yeah, but coming along nicely. Someone mentioned in the video that I published the other day that I need a clapper. I do indeed. However, I don't know that I'm making many coats, so I don't know that that's really a great addition of tool to my temporary workroom here in Spain. So yeah, while I'd love a clapper, I feel like 
I feel like that's probably something that I wouldn't be able to bring back with me at the end. So unless I happen to find one in a secondhand shop or something. All right, so I'm improvising a clapper <laughs> with a wooden wine chest. So we shall see. I know it's about breaking the fibers and something that absorbs the heat and the moisture. So let's see. Okay, so it seems to be working. I do this and I'm kind of hovering just enough so that I can get some heat. And then okay. Definitely flat. Yay. Okay, so now I am hand stitching down the facing on the inside of the collar all the way down. And I'm just, I'm not very good at hand stitching, so this is not by any means a tutorial, but I just go on it underneath. And I'm now I'm doing it one handed because I'm holding the camera. And then I get it, and then I kind of go back in where I was, where I came out, go back in where I came out, and then grab a few right on the edge there. Again, one handed, this is kind of silly. Anyhow, you get the idea that I'm affixing the facing to the main part of the coat, which will also help keep it flat. And I'm just gonna keep doing that. Photos and she just looks so happy and so thrilled to be wearing such a gorgeous outfit. If you did want to pick up the printed pattern, you can get free shipping on that from the Tilly and the Buttons website with the code SHIPBOBBY, but that's only until midnight on Monday the 27th of January, so you haven't got that. Good morning, everyone. It is... Wednesday morning no Thursday morning <laughs> Thursday morning and it is a absolutely stunning morning here in Sichez it's just gorgeous and gosh I have to tell you that I every day walk past this beautiful beach and I take great pains to not take it for granted because I'm so loving living here right now and I know that's not forever so I'm just enjoying the moments and taking in this beautiful day the end of January and we we're walking along this beautiful beach and uh, it is it's just amazing. Anyway, I am about to head back to the apartment. I just dropped the kids off. I picked up some pain au chocolat at the bakery and uh, now I'm heading back to finish up my coat, I hope, and probably start a new project. All right, so first of all, I gave this coat a really good press because I felt like being gentle with the pressing was not working and I didn't find that it was um what big mess over there on my table um I didn't find that it was felting or anything so I didn't feel like I had to be super super dainty with the pressing I did by hand hand sew down all of this hand stitch all of the facing and I also hand stitched the hem I was going to add the same the same detail to the inside of the cuff and honestly I just ran out of steam. So what's left? What's left is that I have to do, oh I've just, I've just kind of tucked this here just so that I can kind of keep the shape that I'm looking for. So I still have to do the, the belt and if I want to add the pockets, at least one pocket. Okay, so the coat is getting finished up today. I wore it the other day when it was cold, just wrapped it around me because I didn't have the ties on yet to kind of get a feel for it and I really love it. Now, I do not have enough of this fabric left to do a long enough tie to go all the way around the coat, but actually I lent the coat to a friend when we were going out and she was chilly and I noticed that I liked the way it hung in the back, not bunched up at the waist. So what I'm doing is I've taken what I have left and I've done this and I have cut it in half and I'm opening up the side seams of the jacket coat um, where I want the tie and I'm just going to insert it there so that the ties will just tie in the front or in the back but not go all the way around. So 
I think it's gonna work out well. So unfortunately that didn't work because it pulled the line of the jacket off totally. And since I don't have more, I don't have enough to go all the way around, I think I'm just gonna get a big snap and let it be kind of an oversized boxy situation rather than trying to bunch up all of the coating into like a waistband, which I just, it's not a tailored coat. It's really much, very much an open coat. And because it's long, I think that's the best thing. So I'm gonna go out and get a snap. Okay guys, I'm ready to wrap this puppy up. So maybe next time I won't follow three different projects at the same time because um, that was gonna take me a while to finish and um, ended up being a little more cumbersome than I had intended. However, um, you're at least getting to see all three. So in the end, I'll put in a video of the sweatshirt in the end, I took the band off the bottom because I felt like it was kind of constricting it a little bit. Um, I, you know, considered, I was gonna say frogging, that's, a, that's in uh, knitting, not sewing. I considered cutting this one up and doing something else with it, but I actually have worn it a couple times when it's chilly out and I just wanna throw something easy over top of something else. Um, it doesn't look amazing, it looks fine. Um, it's kind of meh, so there you go. So that one was probably my least favorite. The coat turned out really nice, and the more I wear it, the more I like it. Um, the belt ended up turning into a bit of a fiasco, but the poppers that I added um, turned out to give it a really nice line, and I've already had a friend ask me if she can make one with me. We'll do it together. Uh, so yeah, and the fabric, I love the fabric. I feel like the coating with the texture is different, and um, I feel like it's really classic. Uh, but but still like a pretty color. It's not just a black coat or a beige coat or a, you know. So very, very happy with that. And I will be making another one of those for my friend. And then lastly, I think my very favorite, well, it's hard between the coat and the, um, and the French poetry dress. The French poetry dress is super pretty. I would say the only thing that keeps it from being the favorite for me is that the fabric is, you know, a polyester viscose type thing and, um, I, I know that like once this, the weather warms up a bit, it's not going to be particularly breathable. So it's more of a winter dress, and um, but I have worn it three or four times. I do really like it. And I'm planning definitely to make another one of those really, really soon. So anyway, here, this was my first try at doing a, a maker vlog uh, um, where I'm covering different um, patterns at the same time. So I definitely would love to do something like this again. And I'm working on my setup and working on my skills. So thank you for your patience. I know it was a little bit messy and a little bit hodgepodgey, but such is life, such is real life. Um, anyway, we are off. It is Carnival right now in Sitges. And fun fact, Sitges actually has the largest Carnival outside of Rio. <laughs> little Sitges. So maybe I'll throw in a little bit of footage of the kids parade that happens today and the adults parade is at night. But so far it has been very fun, very loud, and uh, very colorful. So I'll add a little bit of footage in there. So thanks so much for watching you guys. I'll be back soon with some new makes and some new patterns and some new inspo. And uh, thanks for following along with me as always. I hope wherever you are, the sun is shining and you are sewing. Take care, bye-bye.